If nothing else, the Megillah is the story of the unexpected. Beginning in the first chapter, the meaning of Achashverosh's fit of rage and anger and deciding to depose and kill Vashti for what seems to be a petty offense, one could never have known at the time that, of course, that would lead to Esther entering the palace. And in the second chapter, at the very end, Mordechai's uncovering of the plot of Bigtan and Teresh, that's also unknown for five years. It just lays there in the Sefer Hazichronos, in the Book of Chronicles and Memories, that have long since been forgotten, and nobody could possibly have known that that would one day play a role in the salvation of an entire people. And surely those letters that Achashverosh distributed at the end of the first chapter, saying each person should be in charge of their own household, which the Gemara and Masech the Megillah tells us, convinced the entire empire of 127 provinces that the man was Bechezka Shota, that he was deranged. And therefore, when he sent out under Haman's auspices those second set of letters calling for the annihilation of the Jews, they hesitated. They weren't sure how seriously or not to take these letters. All of these events in real time were completely inscrutable. One couldn't tell if there was any natural link between them. And then, of course, they're brought together over the narrative of the Megillah to bring the Megillah to its well-known conclusion, the salvation of the Jewish people. There's a message here for all of us. In our personal lives, there are sometimes events, oftentimes events, which in real time feel painful or difficult, very difficult for us to understand. As Esther herself, as captured in the Mizmor al-Yela Sashachar in Psalm 22, said, Keli, Keli, Lama Azavtani, God, why have you abandoned me? She felt that she was walking into certain death. Very often in our own lives when we experience these trials, these tribulations, these moments which are dispiriting or unsettling, it's completely unclear to us at the time what the ultimate meaning of these events will be. But if the Megillah teaches us anything, it's that perhaps we're best off reserving judgment. For as my Rebbe, Rebbe Yitzchak Avram Tursky, taught me so many decades ago, so often life, when you're living it in real time, seems crooked, and you look at it in retrospect, and you appreciate how it's really just a straight line. On the communal level, of course, this Purim brings with it many memories of a very difficult year, a year nobody could have possibly imagined. From my standpoint, there's nothing that could possibly ever justify the kind of loss of life that we've seen across the world, in this country in particular, and within our own community. And yet at the same time, it's important to at least be open, to be open to the possibility of a Megillah Esther, that these events that we're experiencing are stealing us. They're giving us a greater sense of resolve and perhaps even a greater sense of appreciation for when things, as we have started to see, return to normal, when there's good tidings and good events in front of us, perhaps we'll be better able to appreciate the company of one another the meaning and significance of community, and never ever have to think about social distancing, but on the contrary, social gathering, as it says in the Megillah, kenos es kol hayyuhudim. Ultimately, the Megillah is both a very joyous book and letter, as Chazal told us, Igeris and Sefer, but also a very sobering one. It reminds us that life is filled with challenge, filled with difficulty. Sometimes we never quite know in real time, or maybe ever, exactly how the pieces are supposed to fit together. But in good faith, as Rashi says on the mitzvah of Tamim Tiyayim Hashem Elokecha, Koma She'over Alecha Kabel Betmimus, whatever we experience, we accept wholeheartedly the Al Tachkor Achar Al Asidos. We don't try to predict or prognosticate the future, but we remain open to the possibility that today's challenges will be tomorrow's triumphs, that today's suffering will bring an even greater sweetness in days of the future. So may it be for all of us. So it was for Esther, for Mordechai and the Jews of that generation. 
Bayamim Hahem Bazman Hazam. So maybe the story of this most difficult and challenging year in our lives, maybe look back perhaps decades from now and say that it made us stronger, more resilient, more sensitive, more caring, more communally minded. And for that, for that possibility, the Megillah has a very important lesson to teach all of us. Wishing everybody a Simchat Purim, a wonderful Purim of Ora, of Simcha, of Sason, of Yakar. May we all be strengthened by the experiences that we've endured. May we all look forward, v'nahafochu, to reversal and to redemption in the months that lie ahead.